D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Tolerance is the last virtue of a depraved society. At his hearing, when he pled guilty to three charges, was that his intention was to kill as many people as possible that day. What he objected to was our stand on traditional marriage. This is Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a viewer-supported program of D. James Kennedy Ministries. I'm Frank Wright, and I hope you'll take some time to visit us at our ministry website, where you'll find an amazing collection of free audio, video, and digital resources. It's all available at djameskennedy.org. Our modern society claims to hold no virtue in higher esteem than that of tolerance. But ironically, this so-called tolerance is actually used as a weapon to silence and marginalize Christians. Our guest today has some experience with that. He's Matt Barber, founder of barbwire.com. In addition to being an author and columnist, Matt is also a constitutional law attorney and a former professional boxer who has taken his fight from the ring to the culture war. Matt, welcome and thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You are actually someone who has experienced being silenced in the name of tolerance firsthand, aren't you? I am, yes. Uh, a little over a decade ago, found myself uh, living in the Midwest, working for a major Fortune 100 company. And I was praying to God. I said, Lord, I, I feel like I, you want me to do so much more. I want to serve your kingdom. I don't want to serve this major this corporation necessarily. I loved my job. I enjoyed it. So I, uh, I felt led to, to write an article. I'd started writing a series of, of op-ed pieces mm -hmm. and I wrote an article ironically titled, Intolerance Will Not Be Tolerated. And, um, and when my company found out about that, uh, the Human Rights Campaign uh, a Homosexual Activist Organization complained to my company about that. And I found myself without a job uh, because I took a, a position uh, for for the uh, God's design for natural marriage between a man and a woman, and that launched a series of events that has me where I am today. A couple lessons here: certainly, uh, secularists are anything but tolerant. It's tolerance for for me, not for thee. And secondly, I learned that uh, we we have to be faithful to God. Be careful what you pray for, because God may give it to you, and He'll give it to you in dramatic fashion. Yeah. But that launched me into the the re the true call I think that He has for me today. So it, it was a tough time. It was. Uh, for, for me and my family, but it was also a blessing in the end. Tolerance today seems like uh, we have to tolerate them, they get to persecute us in, in many cases. Well, you know, we, we have to define our terms here. What do we mean by tolerance? And, and tolerance typically means, hey, let's agree to disagree on this certain thing. Right. Uh, unfortunately for the secular left, uh, tolerance is a euphemism. What they mean by tolerance is, uh, uh, you better agree with us or else. You agree with our position or, or else. And at the root of, of leftist toler uh, tolerance is, of course, political correctness. And I often say that, that political correctness is a, a barrier to truth and a pathway to tyranny. So anytime you hear uh, a, a, quote, progressive talking about tolerance, uh, you better let, uh, be looking for the red flags to go up because uh, uh, some persecution may be just around the corner. Freedom of conscience has been a guiding principle since the founding of Western civilization. What's the effect of this tolerance movement on freedom of conscience? The left is agenda-driven, and it is a secularist agenda, agenda, agenda that is hostile to, to Christianity and to uh, the, the free exercise of religion as guaranteed by the First Amendment. So with this president, we have seen unprecedented attacks against uh, the free exercise of religion. The biblical model for human sexuality is now verboten, and we have instances like with uh, uh, Aaron and Melissa Klein um, out in, uh, in, in Oregon, I believe it is, who have been fined $135,000 mm -hmm. simply because they said we, did, we very politely declined to bake a wedding cake for a, a lesbian pair. And they not only were they fined $135,000 right before Christmas, uh, the government came in, swooped in, and cleaned out their bank accounts. Uh, it left them with, with uh, five children, this, this family, 
uh, really without it, without any funds for Christmas, without any, any funds to even pay the, the bill. So there, that is that the kind of tolerance we're, we're talking about here with the left? It, it sure seems so, but th that doesn't look like tolerance to me. That looks more like tyranny. Free speech advocates have always been concerned about anything that would produce a chilling effect on speech, whether it's a law or a regulation. And the Supreme Court has, has touched on that in many, many of its rulings. Doesn't the tolerance police sort of create a chilled atmosphere where people are actually now afraid to speak what they really believe? Well, that's absolutely the uh, secular left's M.O., the, 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 the thought police, the, the tolerance crowd's M.O., is to, to personally attack and, and even publicly destroy individuals, financially destroy individuals. They're very effective in using bullying and intimidation to, to silence dissent. And, you know, but Scripture says there's nothing new under the sun, and as mm -hmm. Christians... We must stand firm. We're told that they're going to hate uh, us because they first hated him. We're going to be persecuted if we sp speak truth. And, and as in, in my personal case, uh, I, I suggest to people that they stand firm, speak truth anyway, trust in God. He will be faithful. There may be some tough times, but ultimately he uses all things for good and he will use that kind of harassment and persecution for good. We need to come together as the body of Christ and stand firm for truth in an unwavering way. And the leadership of the church is responsible to God for whether or not it proclaims the full counsel of God. What can an individual believer do to help speak truth into a culture desperately in need of it? Well, uh, first of all, they can speak truth into a culture that is desperately in need of it. Uh, you know, be salt and light uh, in, in a culture that, that embraces darkness. And, and the reality is if you are, you know, salt uh, in, in an open wound burns. Salt is a preservative, but it also burns. Light to those whose eyes have become adjusted to darkness is blinding. So if, if you are salt and light in a culture that loves darkness, yes, you're going to, to anger people. You're going you're to be blinding. You're going to burn them, you know, but we are told to do so. And so be in the world, not of the world. It doesn't, you know, doesn't mean that we are to retreat and not engage our culture. We are commanded to engage our culture. And so that's a misconception that I, that I think people need, need to get over. And, and more and more, I believe, I believe uh, faithful Christians will get over it and engage our culture. Matt, thanks again for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. The forces of political correctness have been pursuing their campaign to legitimize vice and evil while silencing truth for quite some time now. My friend and mentor, Dr. D. James Kennedy, was a perceptive observer of the purveyors of unrighteousness and their tactics. Because he knew the Bible, he knew that there was nothing new under the sun. Pontius Pilate questioned the existence of objective truth 2,000 years ago, and it continues with the opponents of Christ today. As Dr. Kennedy shares in this portion of his message, the new tolerance. I think it's important, like the groundhog, to every once in a while stick our heads up, look around, and find out what's going on. And in case some of you missed it, we just passed into a totally new age. We passed through the age of modernity, modernism, and we are now in the postmodern age. So now we're in the postmodern age. I wonder how many of you noticed that. Did you miss that? Got to stick your head up more often and look around. For example, you might look around and find out what's being taught to your children. It's a new age, folks. It's altogether different. If you think things are the same as they were, oh, oh, oh have you got a surprise coming. Someone said that there's one thing that's being taught to our children today. From kindergarten through graduate school, there's one lesson that they're learning. It is the dominant theme of the postmodern curriculum. You know what it is? Tolerance. Tolerance is being willing to, to put up with 
endure, bear with those whose views or lifestyles are different from yours without agreeing with them. And every Christian should be tolerant in the correct and historical meaning of that word. It's what the Bible means in the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, which says, love endureth all things. But if you think that's what is being taught in the curricula of this country, you are very wrong. The new tolerance means this. Not only do you put up with and endure and bear with those who have different views, habits, and or lifestyle than your own, but you agree with their views as well. Furthermore, you hold that their views are equally as valid and as true as your views. And furthermore, that their lifestyle is equally true and equally valid with your own. And therefore, there's no possible way that you could be intolerant because there's nothing to be intolerant of. And furthermore, you must even be willing to promote and endorse that other lifestyle since it is every bit as good as yours. Furthermore, there is a total concept of feeling that's involved in postmodernism, and we have even invented a new civil right. And that is the civil right for my feelings not to be hurt. A young lady in one of the high schools recently sued. And uh, she sued, I think, when they sang a song that had some religious words in it, one of our patriotic songs. And she said that that hurt her feelings. The whole machinery stopped. The whole school ground to a halt. The courts moved into action. We cannot have anybody's feelings hurt. This is why I have repeatedly said that tolerance is the last virtue of a depraved society. Tolerance is the last virtue of a depraved society. When you have an immoral society who has blatantly, proudly violated all of the commandments of God, there's one last virtue they insist upon, tolerance for their immorality. And they will not have you condemning what they have done as being wrong. And they've created a whole world construct in which it's not. And in which they are no longer the criminal or the villain or the evil person, but you are. And so they call evil good and good evil. And believe me, that's just the beginning. Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That statement alone could one day in America could have landed him in jail because it is absolutist. Only Christ died for the sins of the world. Only Christ rose again from the dead. Only Christ offers eternal life freely to those that will trust in him. Christianity is diametrically opposite from all of the other world's religions in those things that really matter. But because it is absolute and not relative, it is Christianity against which all of this that I have mentioned is aimed. Dear friends, it's time 
that we stood up for Jesus Christ and showed some backbone while we still have a place to stand. As Dr. Kennedy pointed out in his message today, the new tolerance is actually a mask for virulent intolerance. Organizations and churches that advance biblical morality are in the crosshairs in America in a way that's never been true before. Back in the 1960s, the Southern Poverty Law Center did important work in the struggle for civil rights for African Americans. But five decades later, it has become nothing more than a tool of the political left, declaring Bible-based Christian organizations to be so-called hate groups with very dangerous consequences. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a uh, left-wing fundraising machine, basically. Peter Sprigg is a senior fellow with the Family Research Council based in Washington, D.C. At one time, they developed a reputation for uh, sort of serious analysis of uh, uh, racial hate groups like uh, neo-Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan and so forth. The Southern Poverty Law Center is continuing to operate off of a reputation of the past in which they were focused on racist organizations. Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. The name of the Southern Poverty Law Center is a little deceptive because the only thing impoverished about the Southern Poverty Law Center are their ethics. What they do is they simply go after and try to marginalize Christian organizations that speak about biblical morality. And they do nothing to help uh, those who are poor in the South. Uh, they have become uh, really a tack dog uh, for, the, uh, for the gay and lesbian, uh, and bisexual, transgender movement. This is an organization that has a massive endowment of, uh, I think, $300 million. Much of it is uh, kept offshore in offshore accounts in the Cayman Islands and so forth. Uh, and yet they, uh, they exploit people, small donors and so forth, uh, asking for money that they don't need in order to do things that are, uh, that are disingenuous, that are not actually uh, helping homosexuals, but simply um, attacking uh, people who they happen to disagree with ideologically. Such opposition arose in a very real threat in the summer of 2012. Jerry Boykin, Executive Vice President of the Family Research Council. August 15, 2012, Floyd Lee Corkins walked into the lobby of the Family Research Council. Uh, Leo Johnson, who was our building manager, was uh, manning the front desk at that time and asked for some identification. This man, Mr. Corkins, reached into his backpack and instead of pulling out identification, he pulled out a gun, which he aimed at Leo and fired. Leo was wounded in the arm. Leo wrestled him to the ground with one good arm, took his pistol away from him, and started to shoot him. Uh, and then Leo told us later that God told him not to shoot Floyd Lee Corkins. The FBI agent told me that his courageous, bold response saved many lives that day. The would-be shooter had a backpack with 100 rounds of ammunition and 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches. He had intended to kill as many people as he could and then smear Chick-fil-A sandwiches in their faces uh, that day on August the 15th. So this was two weeks after the Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day that some people may recall when there was such a turnout across the country of support for Chick-fil-A uh, because of their support for marriage. What he objected to was our stand on traditional marriage. We had said that marriage is the institution between a man and a woman, and he uh, was a volunteer for a local LGBT organization. Uh, how did we respond to a man who came in to terrorize our building, who has since pleaded guilty to terrorism? Well, we've prayed for him. We've prayed that he might come to a uh, an understanding of the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Floyd Corkins was convicted of an act of domestic terrorism. This is the first terrorism conviction in the District of Columbia since uh, the, the law was enacted after 9-11. When he was interrogated by the FBI, they asked him, how did you pick your 
um, target. Now, how did you, this building, this organization, did you, did you, how did you find it? Or did you like look it up online, or how did you know about it? Southern Poverty Law lists uh, anti-gay groups like not online. Southern Poverty Law Center is reckless in labeling groups as hate groups or labeling individuals as hate mongers, and they do both. They have no authority to do so. The Southern Poverty Law Center needs to realize that they have blood on their hands. And um, it's not that they can't criticize us. We can take criticism. But the hate label is a slander, and it is an irresponsible slander which, in our case, led directly to violence. At the time of the shooting, several dozen homosexual groups denounced the violence, but there was never an apology from the Southern Poverty Law Center. I can assure you if a, someone who had once attended a Sunday school class had gone into an, a, a gay and lesbian organization and a, attempted to do what Mr. Corkins attempted to do in our building, we would still be hearing about it. Meanwhile, Family Research Council's name is still listed on the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate map. So also is that of Truth in Action Ministries, now D. James Kennedy Ministries, because we proclaim what the Bible says about marriage and sexuality. Supposedly, we're also a hate group, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're a very dangerous organization. Not only dangerous from a standpoint that they inspired a gunman to come into our building, but dangerous because they are ready and willing and working to dispose of our First Amendment, and that is dangerous. As you have just seen, the forces of tolerance are often quite intolerant. It's amazing that we live in an era where mainstream biblical morality that springs from the worldview this nation was founded upon can be slandered as somehow being hateful. It's nothing but an attempt to marginalize Christians. There's no anger, it's said, like the anger of a guilty conscience. And when Christians proclaim the Word of God, it causes fury among those who want to ignore Him. And in this case, that fury led to violence. But the media often downplays the number of Bible-believing Christians there are in America and their commitment both to the Lord and to the principles this nation was founded upon. But we have a resource to share with you that will encourage you in that regard. With more, here's my very good friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Frank. Watching the news, you can start to get the sense that biblical truth is an outdated fringe position, but it's not. There are millions of Bible-believing Christians in America, and our constitutional government was founded by men with a biblical worldview. We want to share a book with you that will encourage your faith and help strengthen you to stand for the truth in our shifting society. It's called In God We Still Trust by Dr. Richard G. Lee, and we'll send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation. Simply write to us at Box 6085, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to djameskennedy.org. This book is filled with short daily readings from great leaders and statesmen in American history on biblical virtues, and your faith in the bedrock truths our nation was founded upon will be renewed and strengthened. And we also want to share with you, for the very first time, one of the most important projects in this ministry's history. Starting this month, we're beginning pre-sales on the brand new D. James Kennedy Topical Study Bible. Over 40 years in the making, this Bible features the modern English version of the biblical text as well as thousands of insights and observations from my father, Dr. D. James Kennedy. Nobody could apply biblical truth to the Christian life in our culture like my dad could. And this Bible pulls together his most powerful teachings on these subjects in one place. It's like studying the Bible with D. James Kennedy sitting right next to you. We are incredibly excited about the new D. James Kennedy Study Bible. And if you pre-order a copy now by giving a generous donation of $100 or more, you'll be one of the first to receive this unique new Bible as soon as it's available. And we'll also send you the two CD set, 
The Art of Studying the Bible, which features two never-before-offered messages from my dad. That's the book, In God We Still Trust, by Dr. Richard G. Lee for your generous donation, and the D. James Kennedy Topical Study Bible, plus the two CD set, The Art of Studying the Bible, for your generous donation of $100 or more. Simply write to us at Box 6085, Albert Lee, Minnesota, 56007, or call toll-free 888-334-9762, or go online to djameskennedy.org. The great Christian writer G.K. Chesterton once noted that the object of opening the mind as of opening the mouth is to shut it again on something solid. He further pointed out that minds and mouths that remain perpetually open are not indicators of intelligence, but rather foolishness. And yet today, we live in a culture that pretends, in the name of tolerance, to value minds so open that everything seems to fall out of them. In reality, it's all merely a pose. As many have discovered, there's no open-mindedness among the forces of so-called tolerance at all. Instead, they exhibit minds that have closed and closed hard against any notion of biblical truth. Perhaps this should not be a surprise to us. As the Apostle John tells us, this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Some Christians have suggested that this problem will be solved if the Christian church were to simply avoid politics and just preach the gospel. But the good news of Christ includes His Lordship over every area of life, and true gospel proclamation will extend to moral issues as well. The apostles and the early church fathers found that the sinful world reacts negatively and often violently to biblical truth. This is not a sign that we're doing something wrong, but rather that we're doing something right. Let us ask God for strength and courage as we declare life-saving truth to a culture that's embracing death. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us on Truths That Transform. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Only the Spirit of God can make people better. It is only where the Spirit of the Lord is that there is liberty. The ACLU, the, the Freedom from Religion Foundation, the, these groups that want to really push religion to the corners of society. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.